Before you can start creating any racing game where you're going to be relying on physics, you need to understand what's underlying the system. And it's not only the overall physics system, but what really is and literally is driving it are the wheels of your carts and the physics that is on those wheels. And the way you set that up is absolutely fundamental to getting your game correct. Now, if you've had any experience using the wheel colliders and the vehicle setup in Unity, you'll know that it's seemingly very unpredictable, especially if you don't know where to start or what exactly you're trying to achieve. So in this lecture, we're going to go right back to basics and look at just a single wheel. Let's jump right into having a bit of a play with the wheel physics system that is in Unity. What you can see on the screen here is a tire or a wheel that I've brought in and also a cube. Now, before we get to those, let's just think about Unity's physics system or Unity in general, about the actual physical systems you put together in Unity. They're all based on the metric system. So measurements are in meters, weights are in kilograms and speeds and things like that in meters per second. So this cube that you can see, which I've added in here, so in the hierarchy, I just right click, go on 3D object and add it in a cube. This cube, I haven't changed the size of. When it is scaled at one by one by one, it is one meter by one meter by one meter. This tire, which is in the Unity package attached to this lecture as a resource, I've unzipped it, dragged it into the assets so that you can see it here and then dragged and dropped it into the scene. Now, if you're following along, you might like to pause the video and make this scene up. You'll also need quite a large ground plane. You can see that mine is massive because you don't want to drive off the edge a little later on. Okay, now you only need one wheel, not two. So I'll just get rid of my second one that I created. Now, the reason I have this unit cube in here is to compare the size of my tire. And if you think of your average car, it's probably going to be about two and a half to three meters long and probably like 1.5 meters high, depends on the type of vehicle that it is, obviously. But you want to make sure that it is accurately sized with respect to what Unity expects. The reason being is that as you start applying forces and weights and all those sorts of things to your vehicle, it's going to make sense if you can keep it in real terms. And therefore you don't have to be applying unrealistic forces to things to get them to move forward if they're all scaled properly. The other thing you need to check is on your wheels, most importantly is that you also have this Z axis going forward. So if you click on your wheel and hit the W key to bring up the axis system on there, you can see that this tire has the Z, the blue axis going forward. Now the red axis doesn't matter as long as it's going out to the side in either direction. Usually when you do bring someone else's car model in, the inside of the tire, if we just turn around and have a look, doesn't actually exist. So it's kind of saving space on modeling and extra polygons that might be in your scene. So if you were to use this same tire, on the other side of your car, then you probably would flip it over and therefore the red axis would be facing out in the other direction. Let's add some physics onto our wheel and have a little exploration of what we're dealing with. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is just turn off the cube. So untick it in the inspector. We will use it a little later on. Select your tire. It needs to have a wheel collider on it. So Add component, look for wheel collider and add that in. Okay, so the wheel collider 
If we try and play at this point, if I just press play and have a look in the console, we're going to get this error saying that the wheel collider requires an attached rigid body. Actually, it's not even an error, it's just a warning. So things will still run, sort of. Uh, so we've got this wheel collider, but we can't actually see it or do anything with it as far as setting its properties. Uh, so let's add a rigid body to our tire as well. So search for a rigid body and add that component. So you can see I've got both of those. As soon as you add your rigid body, you will get this kind of display on your wheel. Okay, you've got this big outer circle. There's a little sphere at the bottom. And then if we have a look over in my camera view, you can see this orange line. I'm going to explain all of these things in a moment. The wheel needs to have a rigid body, as you just found out. Usually the rigid body for the wheel is going to be on the car's body, not the wheel itself, but we don't have that at the moment. So we've got everything all in one here. That's fine. This is still going to work and it's a good little time to experiment with this collider without confusing the matter by having more wheels and a car body and all this physics stuff just going wrong and you've got no idea. So that's why we're just looking at this single unit wheel. So exactly what are we looking at? Well, what I'd like you to do once you've just added those two things with all of the default settings in it is press play. Let's have a look what happens. Okay, where'd your tire go? Oh, obviously up. You saw it bounced, it's come back down to earth and it's flown off again. Who knows where? Uh, the reason being is that the physics system is sending it back up in the air. It's got this a massive amount of bounce on it. Now, why is that on the default system? Okay, well, we think of a car as quite a large, heavy object. The suspension system that's built into this wheel collider, which is actually represented by this orange line here, it's the equivalent of a car suspension spring. Now imagine how much weight that that is holding. The car in this case is basically the rigid body that we've attached to this wheel. Let's have a look at the properties of our rigid body. And you can see if you have a look in the inspector that its mass is set to one. Now that is one kilo. One kilo on top of a compressed suspension spring that's meant to lift a car. Imagine how far it can fling one kilo. And you're actually seeing it happening there when you press play. On the wheel collider itself, it has a mass of 20, and that's fine. The average tire, I guess, is around 20 kilograms. But in this case, it's not really helping much with what's going on uh, with that springing action, the bounciness. So what we can do instead is change our rigid body to something more like a car, which is about a ton or a thousand kilograms. So with that set, Let's press play and have a look how our tire behaves. Now you might get slightly different results from me and your tire might actually go through the ground plane. At this point, don't worry if that happens. Okay, did you see what happened that time? The tire fell and bounced just a little bit as though there was a spring involved because it oscillated before it came to rest. It didn't come to rest at the bottom of its mesh. Let's have a look. You can see there. It came to rest on that little sphere that's at the bottom and on the bottom of the circle that's around it. So is it sitting on the circle or is it sitting on that sphere? What's well, actually sitting on the circle? The circle defines the outside of the wheel. So stop playing. What we're going to do with what we've got here is just get yourself into a good front on view to your tire. The wheel collider, we've got the mass of 20 underneath that we can set the radius. So I think it's about 0 0.35 is about the right size. 
Okay, so if we size it to that, you can see that it's about the right size, though it's not in the right place. So you can use the center section to actually just move it up a little bit until it's aligned nicely with the mesh. Okay, so now what happens when we press play, it's going to fall to the ground and it has a little bit of bounce from the suspension. Okay, so you can imagine a much heavier object like a car or something sitting on top of this now being dropped to the ground and then it bouncing just a little bit on its suspension spring. Let's now take a look at our suspension. So this suspension system, as I mentioned before, is pretty much this orange line going through the tire. Now to see it over in the scene, it is kind of there, but it's buried inside the mesh. If we just change our mode to wireframe that we're looking at it with, you can see that much clearer. Take a look at where the green circle around the outside is and the line through the middle with respect to your spring. It's currently sitting halfway along. So let's press play and see where it ends up. And notice when you first press play, if I can quickly pause, you'll see where the collider sank to. So it went immediately from the center down to the very bottom. And then if you continue to play as it hits the ground, you're going to see it bouncing on the suspension. So let's just go like that. Okay, did you see what happened there? So it bounced up and down until it came to rest at about that middle point of your suspension bar. So wh why is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because of the target position that is set over in your wheel collider. If we go over to the inspector and have a look at that target position, which is down in the suspension spring area, you'll see it's set to 0 0.5. That means that it's trying to get the green line halfway along this suspension as it is reacting to physics. And that's when it's going to finally be satisfied that it's come to rest and will stop bouncing. Now, if we set this target position to one, which is right up the top there, let's have a look, press play. And what do we get? Pretty much no bounce whatsoever. Okay, if you imagine that this collider is sitting at the top of the spring and it hits the ground, the initial reaction of your force is to try and go up when it hits the ground and it's got nowhere to go. There's nothing up above there for it to slide up on. Therefore, you've got a very, very sort of damp spring that gives you very, very little bounce. Okay, let's try and set the target position down to zero. Now you've got all of this spring to move up on. And the result, well, it's a much bouncier tire, as you saw there. Now in both of these situations, you can see that the tire isn't actually sitting on the ground. Now, the reason for that is it's all about this circle around the outside. It's not aligned with your mesh. Therefore, it's not going to come to rest on its visual bottom. So just to change that, once you've got your settings, let's say you do want it to be as bouncy as possible in this particular scenario, then you need to actually change the center of this whole system and move it up again. So change that Y value in the center until it's aligned with your wheel again. Now when we press play, you'll have your bouncy tire, bounces a bit, and then it comes to rest sitting on the bottom. Okay, how about you pause the video now and you try and get it to work if you have your target position at one to get it to sit on the bottom. Okay, how did you go with that? Let's set our target position up to one. That means our center needs to come down to fit our mesh. Press play. It will be a very damp bounce, as you saw there. And it's come to rest you know, pretty much on the bottom.
Okay, let's set our target position back to 0 0.5. And this time what I want to do is modify the length of our suspension string. And you can do that over in suspension distance. So it's currently set to 0 0.3. If we increase that to say 1, you'll get a much longer suspension spring, which means you've got the potential of an awful lot more bounce for it to move along and it's set halfway along that. So you're going to get bounce up in both directions. Okay, so we want to position this again in the middle of our tire. Now with all of that extra suspension spring, let's have a look what we get on our tire. So if we press play, okay, we're still getting it moving um, and it's still giving a bit of spring but I don't think it's actually changed very much at all except that it's sort of when it does hit the ground it actually has a lot further to go down before it might hit the bottom of the spring. So have you modified much of the bounce by doing that? Well it is a little bit bouncier but you know not much. And the reason being is if we have a look at our other settings for our spring is we have like an amount of spring, which is, as you can see, 35,000, which is huge. And we also have this damper factor. Now, it's going to be the damper that is going to dampen that bounciness. So if we turn this down to say, I don't know, let's put it at 1,000 and then press play, we'll get a much bouncier tire Oop. <laughs> and then it obviously has just fallen through the ground okay so um, again unpredictable things that you get with the physics system there's a lot less chance that it's going to fall through the ground once you have four tires on there and in fact when we remove the rigid body it will fix all these little glitchy things because you're not meant to have the rigid body on the actual wheel itself Right, so what happens if we put our dampening, what was it, 4,500, and turn our spring down to, let's say, 1,000? Okay, so that's considerable. Let's press play and have a look what we get. Okay, so our spring doesn't have as much force and it's a much gentler into it because, again, you've got this damper going on, which is much greater than the downwards spring. So uh, let's change our damper down to 100, not while we're playing, and have a look at the effect. Okay, so that had the result of giving you more bounce before the tire disappeared, uh, and it actually gave you much more range what was going on with the particular tire. Let's set our spring back to 35,000 and our damper back to 4,500, uh, which seem to be pretty optimal values, which I'd say is why Unity has them as the defaults. Right, the last thing I'm going to show you in this lecture is the force applied point distance. What does this do and what on earth is this little sphere at the bottom? Well, when we start turning the tyre and adding forces to it, this sphere is where those forces get added to. So if you grab your force um, point distance and actually change it, you can see that it's changing the location of this sphere. So imagine you're trying to like push a tire along a road. Where are you going to add force? Well, if you're pushing it with your hand, I guess you're going to be doing it at the top. Uh, we're going to actually be pushing it from the bottom along the surface of the road. So when we apply forces to this tire, we actually apply them where this is. If you were to try and push the tire by adding a force in the center, you're not going to get as much kind of leverage on the tire. So if we now just, let's move this back down the bottom here, then we are ready. I'm just gonna set this back to 
zero. Uh, we will leave that there. But you, of course, can play around with this as you like. So that's the basics of the wheel colliders suspension. When we come back, we're going to look at the other properties as well as start programming for these. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.